So the goals of this talk are to understand the initial acute management and the basic treatment of open ankle fractures, to understand the Weber classification and how this predicts instability, to understand how the degrees of instability predict the success of non-operative treatment, and understand how the degree of instability guides both initial and definitive management. This is a treatment algorithm for the management of closed ankle fractures. We will go through this treatment algorithm together now. Basic principles. While open ankle fractures require surgery, closed ankle fractures can be managed without surgery as long as anatomic alignment of the ankle is achieved. The success of closed treatment is based on the initial displacement of the mortise. Ankle fractures with greater initial displacement tend to do worse without surgery. With increasing osseous and ligamentous instability, there's less chance of maintaining an anatomic reduction of the ankle with closed treatment. Closed reduction of a displaced ankle fracture is critical. Reduction of displaced ankle fractures not only restores blood flow to the foot, but can prevent skin necrosis. It is important to administer IV anesthesia or analgesia if available because closed reduction can be painful for the patient. If anesthetic is available, an intraarticular hematoma block can be performed. Remember your anatomy. When administering local anesthetic to the ankle, it is important to inject the medication with the needle medial to the tibialis anterior. Lateral to the tibialis anterior, the neurovascular bundle is present. Intravascular injection of the medication can cause significant cardiac problems. Typically, I administer 2% plain lidocaine without epinephrine into the ankle joint. When injecting medications, aspirating is important to ensure that the medication is not being placed intravascularly. It is important to have splinting materials ready. In particular, adequate padding under the plaster of Paris is absolutely required to prevent burns. Splinting of the ankle, but not casting is important, especially if the ankle is swollen, there is skin compromised, or the bony injury is significant. Immediate casting of an ankle fracture that demonstrates significant swelling can lead to compartment syndrome. The patient can be supine or seated upright with the injured leg dangling from a chair or table. If the patient is supine, externally rotating the hip facilitates this positioning. Typically, the foot is supinated, the ankle placed in slight plantar flexion, and the ankle is medialized. After reduction is achieved and the ankle is splinted, it is important to take the patient out of any traction, to check perfusion of the toes, and if available, obtain an x-ray after reduction is achieved. That's how we manage closed ankle fractures. Open ankle fractures are managed differently. First, one should remove gross contamination manually and with saline irrigation. The limb should be reduced and realigned and splinted after applying betadine gauze or clean dressings. This should be performed before x-rays are obtained. If available, IV antibiotics should be administered immediately and tetanus should be updated as well. Open fractures need surgery, so if you are unable to perform this at your institution, transfer it immediately to another hospital. The Gastillo-Anderson classification is used to classify open fractures. Understanding this classification system and appropriately classifying patients is important for the care of the patient and communicating information to other providers. The Dennis Weber classification is a commonly used ankle fracture system and is based on the level of the fracture of the fibula as it relates to the syndesmosis. Weber A fractures are below the syndesmosis, Weber B fractures are at the level of the syndesmosis, and Weber C fractures are above the syndesmosis. The level of the fibula fracture often predicts stability or instability of the ankle joint. Weber A fractures typically are stable injuries. The deltoid ligament and syndesmosis are typically intact, and these can be treated without surgery. Weber B fibula fractures are often associated with an injury to the deltoid ligament and or the syndesmosis. They are often unstable and may require surgery. Weber C fractures typically present with an injury to the deltoid ligament and the syndesmosis leading to instability and often require surgery. 
Ankle fractures are caused by a rotational mechanism, but the fibula can be fractured by a direct blow. It is important to differentiate between these two mechanisms as a direct blow does not result in ligamentous injury and the ankle is stable. This x-ray demonstrates a Weber C fracture of the fibula and given its rotational mechanism, represents an injury to the deltoid ligament as well as the syndesmosis. This is an unstable injury that requires surgery. Stability is based on the number of malleoli that are fractured as well as associated ligamentous injury. The more malleoli that are fractured, the more difficult it is to maintain anatomic alignment without surgery. Looking at the treatment algorithm, Weber A fractures or non-displaced Weber B fractures can be treated in a cast. Patients can be allowed to weight bear as tolerated immediately, and they should be followed up in four to six weeks time. If the ankle is initially very swollen, a splint should be applied. However, if there's minimal swelling and little displacement, casting is appropriate as an initial modality. Patients with Weber C fractures, but an otherwise non-displaced mortis, should be treated in a cast. They should not weight bear and require close follow-up to detect displacement on x-rays. Ankle fractures that present with syndesmotic widening require a close reduction, immobilization, and referral to a facility where surgery is available. With ankle fractures that demonstrate a fracture of the fibula and widening of the medial clear space, the bimillar equivalent ankle fracture requires close reduction and placement in a molded splint or cast. These patients should be made non-weight bearing and should be referred to a central hospital for possible surgery quickly. If the fracture is relatively well aligned, a splint or cast can be applied without reduction. If there is significant displacement, the fracture must be reduced and immobilized with a splint. Delayed referral can result in increased fracture consolidation and malalignment, which can make surgery more difficult. In conclusion, any displaced ankle fracture requires close reduction and splinting. Open ankle fractures require immediate attention acutely and oftentimes surgery. Transfer to a surgical center should be performed immediately if no local resources are available. The success of closed treatment or surgery is based on achieving anatomic alignment of the ankle. As increasing injury is present, it is more difficult to achieve an anatomic reduction without surgery. Close follow-up is required, especially in the setting of displaced ankle fractures treated without surgery. Patients should be referred immediately if they require surgery. This is the end of the video series on ankle fractures. Thank you for watching.